Good evening and welcome into CUTV's coverage of Cal Vulcan Hockey, where tonight we will be placed in part two of the homecoming hockey series, where after the first game, the California Vulcans men's two team took part against Penn State Altoona. Now, the men's first team will be taking on one of their most heated rivals, the Robert Morris Colonials. I'm Zach Prosby, and joining me for his first time ever on CUTV tonight is Stephen Ruffing. And Stephen, we'll talk about California first before we get into this big rivalry, like I mentioned. And California, over the last week, they're starting to get the rhythm under their feet and hitting their stride. Right. Coming into this game, they have won their last three straight games, coming off the two the two games that they lost in the beginning in, their, in, in the beginning of the season. So they're looking to improve that to four straight. Yeah, and in their last game, they took on a Penn State Baron team, and they had a big, incredible 9-1 victory. Anthony Tonkovich, of course, leading the way with five assists and right to six points. But the goaltending situation was even better in that game. It was outstanding. 30 saves on 31 shots. You couldn't ask for a better night from him. Yeah, so maybe we'll see that again tonight. But, of course, I mentioned these two teams do not like each other. Heavy rivals. They played three times last year. Take a look back at what happened last year in this series and expand a little bit on what this rivalry is like in terms of maybe NHL teams, where some people at home may know. This is like Flyers-Penguins. It's, it's a great rivalry, rivalry. They love playing each other. And Cal actually went two and two and three against them last year, extending their record against them to 27-4-0-2. Oh yeah, so California, they're looking to keep edging up the record books. Uh, seems California has a heavy margin right there in those books. But this game is going to be one heck of a contest when anything can go. And when we return, we will have opening puck drop here on CUTV. The Multimedia Access Center is an open lab where California University students can work on an assignment, attend a workshop, print a document for class, or take advantage of a variety of services such as large format printing, web development, and graphic design. Located in the renovated Natalie Student Center across from the Student Bookstore, the Mac Lab is also your home for OrgSync support and services. For hours of operation or for more information, stop by the Mac Lab, visit our website, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. Take preset one for Cal U's best music. More music in the car. More music in the door. More music everywhere. This is, this is 91.9 WCAL Power 92. The home of the Vulcan Nation. Playing Cal U's best music. 91.9 WCAL. WCAL Power 92. First published in the 1880s, the California Times is the oldest student media at California University. Circulating 3,000 issues weekly on campus and in the surrounding community, the Times' mission is to deliver fair and balanced news to the student population of California University. All students are welcome to be a part of the California Times. Our offices are located in the Natalie Student Union. Keep up to date with the Times online at www.caltimes.org, Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. Complete news, entertainment, and sports coverage from around the area, region, and nation is found right here on CUTV News Center every Thursday at 5 p.m. with anchors Jennifer Germano, Zach Prosba, Entertainment with Mike Mays, and Sports with Matt Hagee. Follow us on YouTube, CUTV News Center, and on Twitter, CUTV underscore PA for your complete rebroadcast of your Vulcan sports. News Center airs every Thursday at 5 p.m. on Armstrong and Atlantic Broadband. Hello and welcome back to the Ross Traver Ice Garden where just in a few moments the Cal Vulcan one men's team will be taking on the Robert Morris Colonials and before that we will have a special presentation of course tonight most of the proceeds will be benefiting Project Bundle Up which of course provides winter clothing for those in need of course run by Joe DiNardo weather meteorologist for WTA in Pittsburgh we'll see that presentation in just a moment Again, I'm Zach Prosba, joined by Stephen Ruffing. Uh, and tonight, of course, part of the homecoming festivities here at Cal U this week. Uh, got a lot more coming up this week. Uh, tonight, really the central midpoint of all of it. And it's actually the one thing I look forward to the most. And I know you're a freshman, so how exciting is it to be calling a hockey game and seeing a hockey game for your school? It's very exciting, especially because it is the homecoming game. 
and it's my first time, so I'm really excited to start my announcing career at this game. And now we will see the presentation of the Project Bundle Up proceeds. Joe DiNardo right there next to President Geraldine Jones and Kelsey DiNardo and Haley Vahant, both of the women's Cal Vulcan hockey team. And then joined also by some of the Vulcan men one team members. And for those of you that may not be familiar with who Joe DiNardo is, Joe DiNardo essentially was the main pioneer for meteorology, not only in Pittsburgh, but elsewhere around the country. He is one of the premier meteorologists in all of the country. And he has been performing Project Bundle Up for many a year now. And of course, it's always good to see charitable donations go to people in need. I know for us specifically, at CUTV, we're doing Operation Christmas Child this year, so uh, I know for the holiday season coming up, I know it's hard to say the holidays are coming up, but it's only a couple months away. Make sure you're not only thinking of yourselves, but you're thinking of others in need this season. Another ceremonial puck drop from Joe DiNardo. As, of course, it is won by California. That is number 12, Mike Warner, the captain for the Vulcans. Looks like he was going up against number 12, Zachary, Zachary Schindler, who is one of the assistant captains for Robert Morris. And now we're going to get the game underway in just a few seconds. Starting in goal for Cal tonight will be Derek Hughes. And starting in goal for Robert Morris will be Nate Mortland. And against Penn State Baron, Stephen, uh, Ryan Lloyd was actually the goaltender. And tonight, Going with Derek Hughes. Now, we of course don't cover Cal hockey enough to know whether there's gonna be a difference or not. We don't know the level of play of these teams. We cover them once a year, unfortunately, which we wish we could cover more of them, but our schedules are so busy. Changing goaltenders, and of course we don't know who the main starter is. Do you think that could affect how the game is played out tonight? 100% because Lloyd coming out from playing, having a great game against Penn State with 30 saves on 31 shots. We'll see how uh, Derek Hughes shows up because, you know, Lloyd was a very big factor in Penn State, so we'll see how Derek Hughes can do. And we're going to see the opening faceoff taken between Zach Schindler of Robert Morris and Anthony Tonkovich of Cal U. And Tonkovich, last year when we covered these games, he had a couple goals himself. Uh, I remember hearing his name quite a bit and he's just one of the dynamic performers for this team. California men team, very much talented, always very talented, in fact. And always one of the best teams to watch in CHE as they've won titles over the last few years and had major rivalry competitions with Robert Morris and other teams as we're about ready for our opening puck drop here on CU TV. And the puck drop will be one by California, Tonkovich will take it and pass it back to number three, Zach Alamo. Now down ice, in about mid ice now. It's dumped in by number 18, Brad Mitchell for the Vulcans. Robert Morris controls it now. And out the near boards, right in front of us. And center ice again, the puck being fought for, it's gonna go back. Alamo has it now for the Vulcans, he sends it up ice. And right there for it is Mike Ferringer. He brings it into the offensive zone for the Vulcans. Now puck down in the deep end. And still controlled by the Vulcans. And an opportunity here and just misses the net. That was Brett Young, who is fresher in the game now. He dumps it back in. A good forecheck there by Young. But Robert Morris is able to control it now. And they'll bring it out. Up the ice comes number 10, Brad Hudson for the Colonials. Sent all the way back where number five, Josh Merriman, can control it. Now Robert Morris is passing along and now it dumped into center ice. California giving chase, but Robert Morris looks like they'll be the first ones to get there. That's number 15 for the Colonials. A good pass there, but no one there. And it goes back to California. Coming up with it at number 33, Alex Smith. Smith coming forward with it. Good pass over. Now right in front of the net and nothing there. That was set up by number 10, Brady Dolan. Yeah, Zach, these two teams are going to be 
coming out strong and fast against each other. You know the rivalry. So it's going to be a very exciting, hard-hitting game. Now, we've already seen a couple hits right in front of the boards near us. California not able to control this one. Keep it in. Now California with another opportunity. Smith just dumps it in to the Colonial Zone. There's going to be a change for the Vulcans. Robert Morris has an opportunity here. They get it out of their own zone and send back to center ice. Now Robert Morris with it. And it's set down. No icing here, and California will control it. Exciting first couple minutes now, and now there will be an icing called against California, so the faceoff will be in the Vulcans' defensive zone. It was 17.51 left here in the first period. Uh, great opening action so far. California's really controlled it most of the time, though, Stephen. And if, I don't know if you noticed, Zach, there's already been a couple spills just player skating. I don't know if it's because the ice is a little chippy from the game before or possibly even the weather. Yeah, well, they did you know, Zamboni the ice, but, you know, I don't know how to skate anyway, so I wouldn't be <laughs> the best one to tell you whether the ice is in good condition or not. But it is somewhat warm outside and a little bit in here as well, even though it's slightly chilly. Uh, but that, it's definitely not good for the ice. I remember, you know, thinking back to the Winter Classic that was in Pittsburgh. They had to keep trying to get the ice to stay cold because it was so warm that the ice would melt. That's not why I have an offsides here with 17. No, it's 20. actually a stoppage of play. Uh, it actually hit off an RMU player's glove before, before coming back in. Oh, well, good eyes. Your first broadcast in the RC is something I'm not. Good call, Steven. You're, you're officially a broadcaster at CUTV <laughs> now. You made a call that even I didn't see. Uh, and of course, you're the probably the better hockey expert, anyways. <laughs> so I, I watch enough, but I don't understand the intricacies of the game, maybe like you do. That's a good pass up here for California, and it's stolen away by Robert Morris coming up into California's zone, but not able to control it. Was number two Benjamin Zorich. Now Robert Morris, a good forecheck here coming from California. RMU sends along the boards, and it's now center ice. It'll be taken by number 18, Brad Mitchell for the Vulcans. Chase from behind, now he has it in center ice. He's gonna take it all the way into the zone himself and shoots it and goes up along the boards and out of play with 16 to 45 to go in the first period. California, again, they're still controlling the majority of the play so far. And they've had a couple of opportunities, it just seems the passes aren't exactly working. Do you think that has something to do with the ice as well? 100%, I mean, you're gonna, they're gonna have to find a way to play on this ice either way. And I know, of course, you imagine like the Penguins. I mean, I know Consol Energy Center is not the best ice either. They even say that their new practice facility, the Lemieux uh, Center in Cranberry, is better than what they have at Consol. But you have to get used to playing there. You play 41 games there a year. The Vulcans, they play a handful of games here as well. As a shot comes from Robert Morris, it goes wide of the net, so it will not count on goal. Brought up into the offensive zone. It's touched, so no icing coming here. Looked like there was a little bit of a slip again in center ice. No penalty called. It looked like a stick was in there a little bit. Now a pass to Robert Morris. Coming up with his Tonkovich, but he has it stolen away. Now there's a big hit there in center ice coming from the Vulcans. A Robert Morris player laid out. This is exactly what we were expecting to see, Zach. Yeah, I would not be surprised if maybe we get a couple scuffles later in this game. It's, I mentioned these two teams don't like each other. You equated it to... Pence Flyers. I don't know if we're going to see as many scuffles as they do every year, but still going to be a tough contest. As a set up now towards the end of boards and field, uh, fielded there by Dalton Francic. Now the Vulcans with numbers. Move on the ice and the puck is stopped at center ice. Robert Morris tries to control it now. California dumps it in the offensive zone. And it's not able to stay in the offensive zone for the Vulcans. As you see now, Robert Morris goes back to get it in their own zone. That's Dylan Junker, number 42. And now California with an opportunity, and it's going to be frozen there by Nathan Mortland with 15-11 to go. First time we've really seen any shot go on goal so far tonight, Stephen. It's actually the first shot on goal tonight. Yeah, so right now, shots on goal, one nothing in favor of California. You saw the replay there. A good opportunity for California, just not able to get that wraparound, and Mortland a good awareness to be able to come and grab that puck immediately. Early on in the game, you could see Cal U is thirsty for that first goal. Yeah, you always want to get on the board first. You never want to get down one nothing because then you're always having to play from behind most of the time, and especially if you get down 2 nothing, 3 nothing, as we saw in the uh, Cal 2 game. They weren't down 3 nothing per se, but 
they weren't able to keep up with Penn State Altoona as an opportunity is missed here by the Vulcans. Robert Morris chasing after it. California is able to clear it out of the zone. Looks like there could be an offsides there. Robert Morris does not feel it. Now they do. A good move there by number 16, Darren Broadus. California controls it in center ice. A big hit there. Now coming up with it is the Vulcans, number 27. That's Bob Robinson. He's not able to make a move. Robinson tries to control it again. And now it's over to Smith. Smith loses control of the puck. Sent up. Uh, Takeaway there and center ice by Mitchell. Mitchell tried to feed it over to Robinson, but there's nothing there. Now Mitchell takes it out of the air and has it for the Vulcans. Now a shot right into the stomach of an RMU defender. Now Puck trying to get clear by the Colonials. Colonials still not able to do it yet. And they send it up, but now they will clear. It's a two-on-two situation here. Pass over by Robert Morris is negated by California. Bringing it back up is number eight, Kyle Cunningham. Early on this game, you could tell and you could see that there is a lot more board play than there is any open ice skating. Now Cunningham and Tyler Gettle chasing after the puck. They both are unable to get it. Now coming up for Robert Morris. And that's a broken stick there for number 21, Ryan Dixon, as he just throws a stick down in frustration as he's going to have to come off the ice. California with the opportunity to possess the puck. 13-22 to go in the first period. Now we see Warner. And now a shot sent up. And Mortland does not decide to hold it. That was sent up by Cunningham. Robert Morris coming with numbers. Again, California, they do a very good job as well as Robert Morris, as you see a shot, looks like he went off the side of the net. The back was saying they've been doing a good job of keeping the play along the boards, not letting it get into the middle of the ice, which is what you alluded to earlier. Now Robert Morris controls it in the center ice and will just dump it in down to the end boards. There to have it is Zach Alemo for California. Under a little bit of pressure, he just gets the pass away. And this will not go for icing as number two, Benjamin Zorich, goes back to field for Colonials. Now an opportunity here for California. Trying to send back down along the boards. Nothing there as it's just dumped in by Nick Vasolka. Now cleared out of the zone again, about eight minutes in. And still nothing on the board so far, only two shots. Only two shots on the board and Steven, you know, We've gone, you know, minutes without a stoppage. Who does this favor, Cal or Robert Morris, in your opinion? Right now, it's all Cal. It's all it's all been in RMU's zone, and if it's in Cal's zone, it's either a dump or just a little. And Dad, it's not even a shot on goal right there. They haven't they haven't got any shots on goal, so it's more Cal, I'd say. Well, actually, they just put a shot on goal up on the the board a little bit to the left of us. I guess they're going to count that as a shot on goal, even though that was nowhere near the net. Yeah, so the unofficial count is 2-1 right now. But uh, again, we're, I don't think we're necessarily going to agree that it was a shot on goal. California with an opportunity here. And it looks like it's snuffed out by the Colonials behind the net. Now California controls it again, sends it back up the boards. Anthony Takovich with a slap shot, just misses the net wide to the left of Mortland. What a shot that was. He got all of that one. And I think that's what California's best at is all their slap shot ability, especially Tonkovich, Alex Smith, Brad Mitchell. They have very good, hard, strong shots. Now, Robert Morris had an opportunity to try and get it out, but it went off number 14, Doug Simon, and back into their own zone. Now Zorich is there, spins it around, and it's cleared out of the zone by the Colonials. Now tried to be dumped, and California will take it away. And there with it now is number 17, Tyler Kutek. Now I see Tonkovich come up the ice. He takes it in himself. Making some nice moves at the front of the net. And it's stopped by Mortland. What a save. As Tonkovich had probably the best opportunity of the night for either side. Was just stopped at the last second by Mortland. A good opportunity. In this Cal U offense, they're going to be looking at Anthony Tonkovich for the assist. He has racked up 10 assists this this season so far, and he is actually leading them in points with 12. Now a takeaway here by Robert Morris, that's number 21, Ryan Dixon. Not able to do anything with it as California possesses it again. And, you know, at that center position, that's where you expect a lot of assists. You know, you let your wingers do the scoring. Right there, Tonkovich took it himself, and he almost made an opportunity to score there. Now at the top, 
near the blue line. A shot is taken by Austin Siebert. Now, take away here. Robert Morris is trying to clear in the zone. Now it's at three on two, and up ahead is number 23 for the Vulcans. It's shot, and it's saved by Moreland. That was Brett Young on the shot. A little bit of a wrist shot near the front of the net. Now, Young and Mitchell collide into each other. I had an opportunity in there, but it's taken away off the teammate's collision. Now, Punk goes into the stand. Rarely do you see that here. Most of the time, they are able to control it. But 9.26 left in the first period. California, their offense started good. Now with five shots on goal compared to the one for Robert Morris that really shouldn't even count as one. Looks like their offense is right on the brink of scoring. Yeah, Zach, and you saw Tonkovich. He had that real good chance of scoring going almost, it was almost a breakaway, but it was very good goaltending. And then Brett Young did have that breakaway, but Mortland had a nice save on it, and you know, right now, Moreland is the only reason the Colonials aren't down one nothing, two nothing. Is the rest of their team honestly has not performed that well so far. Mitchell will feel it or feel it near the end boards, go around the back of the net and able to shake off a Robert Morris defender. Now pass up the ice, and it's going to be dumped in, but it's hit by a Robert Col Robert Morris defender. Now fighting for it is Mitchell for the Vulcans. It stays in the Colonial zone, and now it's going to be taken up and it'll be an icing as Bob Robinson was able to get to the puck first kind of this hybrid icing they see in the NHL with 847 to go and again puck going to be fielded well not fielded really but it's going to be dropped in Robert Morris territory and they've been playing their majority of this game. I'd say at least a good three-fourths of it in Robert Mer Morris territory. And see, Cal U is still keeping that puck in their zone. Really grinding hard to get that first goal. Robert Morris just isn't playing well with, their, uh, with the hockey sticks right now, I think. I, th I think the puck is just bouncing over their 60 entire time. They're not able to get control of the puck. As you see right there, California with a missed opportunity. And a shot is deflected away by Hughes. And can you blame the ice for their lack of skill with the puck? Now a shot again here by California. That's number nine, Joe Doro. Or excuse me. That was for the Colonials. That was actually number nine, Tyler Gettle for the Vulcans. As Robert Warren's close it out of their own zone. Uh, but back to your, your point, I don't even know if you can blame this on the ice. I think that's just the players at that point. The ice can control the puck a little bit, but you have to be able to control your own stick. That's the one thing you can control out there and so far they're not showing a good athletic ability uh, in this game seven and a half minutes left in the first period we still have not had a stoppage in about I'd say five minutes or so maybe even longer than that seems like it's been a while as there's a little bit of a collision there between Kutek and a Colonial and now bring it up as a shot is missed by Alex Wargo for the Vulcans. Wargo controls it, tries to feed it in front of the net, but there's no one there. Robert Morris intercepts it. Now pass up the ice. That will be number 67, Gardner Kramer. He's hit in the corner of the Vulcans' offensive zone. And now the puck comes out. California giving chase to it. Nothing there. That was number 23, Brett Young on the chase. Could have been a slashing penalty there. And Zach, again, Cal U really leading in the off uh, in the offensive category right, right now. Leading shots six to two against RMU. And make it seven to two as there was one right there as an offside is negated here in a shot. And it'll be stopped by Hughes at the last second as we got a little bit of a scruff in front of the net. California, of course, trying to defend their goalies. So now shot seven to three. But as you're speaking of those shots, California had another opportunity. As you see a shot there from Robert Morris, that's really their first opportunity of the game so far to put the puck in the net. Yeah, I'd say that's RMU's first quality chance. And RMU now will have the faceoff in California zone. See if they can do anything with it. Anytime they bring the puck in, it's stopped. Uh, there's a hit. 
They lose the puck on a turnover as we see a slap shot here right into the stomach of Hughes. So Robert Moore starting to rack up a couple shots, but uh, we, we mentioned uh, before the game started, you know, whether the goaltending situation would uh, cause a little bit of a different game plan for California. Right now, Derek Hughes, four for four in shots and saves opportunities. Yeah, it seems like RMU's kind of heating up right now. Cal U's gonna really show that, have to show their defense right now. Face off again to the right of Hughes in the California zone. It is won by Robert Morris. And Mitchell controls it for the Vulcans tonight. He's gonna wait behind the net, wait for reinforcements there. Now it's a pass, Vulcans control it. Looks like that Smith loses the puck. Robert Morris has it in the offensive zone. They still have it. Now shot set wide of the net. And Robinson was going for it. He's not able to get to the puck. Now kept in by Robert Morris. So Robert Morris building a little bit of a series here, trying to keep the puck in the offensive zone. And now it's taken away. Alex Smith has it. It's a two on two. Trailers behind, three on two. Now a man out in front, that's Robeson. Loses his footing, excuse me, that's actually going to be uh, um, Josh Bacon. As now Robert Morris on a three on one. Tries to pass out of there. That's Schindler and nowhere to go with this. Robert Morris again has an opportunity foiled. Puck grabbed that center ice and it's set wide of Hughes. Passed up, now Robert Morris keeps it in the offensive zone. A little bit of a ticky tack pass here. Goes off a California defender into the hands of a Colonial shooter. Now California with it again and they lose control of the puck. Robert Morris quick to chase it down on the far end. And now Robert Morris had an opportunity at the front of the net but it's skated away by the Vulcans defenders. And now there number two Nick Vasolka able to clear it up and Alex Smith gets it out of the zone. Ability for California to make a change. Seems like this RMU offense is really finding their chemistry late in the first period. And you have to also think, you know, the fatigue of California being in their zone the entire time came into play there. As uh, here's a shot, it bounces away from Mortland and it's taken by Josh Merriman. A big hit on the boards. California is able to keep the puck in the offensive zone. There's a man there for the Vulcans, but it hits off his stick. Now at the front of the net, trying to get it in and the net will come off its bearings with 4.07 to go. So after Robert Morris has some quality opportunities, Steve, California comes back with a couple of their own and good fork checking down in the end boards. Yeah, and this, this game is really getting physical at the end of the first here. It started off and it really escalated. I mean, there was at least two or three hits in uh, Cal U's zone right there in that series of play. Now we will see the faceoff will come out of the Robert Morris zone. Faceoff circle just next to the blue line. We see Warner go against Doug Simon. California has and they send it down the boards into Robert Moore's zone. Moreland comes out to field it. Now California trying to control the puck, keep it in center ice. Now Warner has it, loses it, and he's able to pass it away. Now passed up ice. Warner has it again after it comes back to the California zone. The captain for the Vulcans. Now dumped in and a shot right into the glove of Moreland who will just hold it there as a couple California players, including Warner, were coming at him. If Cal Yu could get some nice hard slap shots from the point, and maybe if they're lucky, they could catch a rebound and try to score like that because it seems like RMU, RMU's goaltender is really just shutting them down right now. Yeah, Moreland, nine of nine and saved opportunities so far. Shots nine to four in favor of the Vulcans. Still waiting for that first tally on the scoreboard tonight. Here's a shot, it looks like almost a redirect. Mortland was there, didn't even get to him though. Now a slap shot from the top corner of the blue line. California still with control of it. And it's still in the Robert Morris zone. Now sent up and just missing it for the Vulcans is number 13, Vinny Macaron. Now Robert Morris with an opportunity here. Sent down towards the net, and the Vulcans are there to keep it away, and it's sent out on a dump. That could have been an offside, as it did hit a Robert Morris player, but California's able to possess it. And the ref was signaling for a delayed offsides there, so if the RMU team did touch it, they, they would have they called that. 
Now shot set wide, looked like it might have hit the stick of a Vulcan defender. Robert Morris controlling the center ice now and sent up and a little bit of a knuckle puck bounce right in front of the net. And at the top of the blue line, shot come from number 42, Dylan Junker. Looks like he whiffed on it as now Macaron slips at center ice. We haven't really seen anybody slip in the last few minutes and since we brought up that topic at the beginning of the uh, first period, but there again it comes up into play. California with it, that is Kyle Cunningham. Loose in front of his net, a shot and a goal for Robert Morris off the takeaway. That's number 67, Gorner Kramer with the shot and score. And right there, California just not able to possess the puck well enough as we'll see the replay in just a second of that goal with 209 left in the first period. You see right here, lost puck, easy opportunity right in the five hole. Yeah, that's just that's just bad play by by Cal Cunningham, number eight for Cal U. You, you, you gotta get that puck out of your zone when there's two players on you like that. Now pass sent up for the Vulcans. Into the zone is Warner. Warner making some nice moves around the net. Now he stops and hit hard. No penalty coming up as the puck goes out of play. 151 to go here in the first period. And you know, California, their offense started out really great, but now it seems like Robert Morris is coming out guns blazing and they have that first tally on the board. How important is that to get that first goal, Steve? It's very important, especially because how well Cal U is playing. That first goal could possibly just drain their energy. And there were a couple opportunities for Cal there, a couple of rebounds, and no one was there to be able to clean them up, though. As now Hughes lets the puck go. We're down to 135 left in the first period. Mitchell brings it up, skates around a couple defenders. He's going to bring it into the zone himself. Looking for a uh, lane. There's a Cal U player there, sent back up. That's Warner, Warner with a shot, and it's no good. Puck bounces up, and it's in the play, and hits a fan in attendance in about the first, second row. Right there, you see the man with the long hair, the one where well, was the culprit of getting hit with 1.15 to go. That's the second time we've seen a puck uh, go out of play towards us, and one went to the other side as well. Uh, over the couple of years that I've been coming here for the homecoming hockey series, never really seen go pucks go out of play like that. So maybe that ice is affecting the puck a lot more tonight. Now California with an opportunity here, sent around the end boards. California not able to keep it up though. Now coming up with it is Zora. She's not able to control the puck and it goes behind him. And now Robert Morris with another opportunity. It's deflected off the shoulder of Hughes in the front of the net and the uh, crossing pass goes a little wide of Robert Morris's player and now bringing up was Mike Ferringer for the Vulcans he is stopped 45 seconds to go here in the first period now Tonkovic will control it and send it around that's number 15 Dalton Francic and Robert Morris with another takeaway close to the net and here's a shot opportunity and it's deflected wide by Hughes shots now 10 to 9 in favor of California as the puck will be frozen there by Hughes, and there's a little bit of a scuffle, extracurricular activities after the play. Shots now actually 11 to 10 in favor of Robert Morris. And Derek there. Hughes does a great job of covering that puck there and that little scrum going on. <coughs> Way to stay not stand on his head there. As you see, it just went right in front of him, and he's able to control it. It looked like it actually hit off of him before he's able to find it. And then that hit at the end of the play, as you see right there, as the replay was stopped. Sets up a face-off here with 24 seconds to go. Hughes is out of the net, and he will freeze the puck again. California, Robert Morris is getting in the face of Hughes, but they're not having anything of it. We're seeing a lot of scuffles more on this end than the other end, Stephen. Right, and that RMU team is really, really not letting up on uh, the Cal U defense right now. California going after that's Jordan Lockhart. He sends it back around. That's Tyler Kutek. Now up the boards. Now California with it. That's Alex Smith, a big bodied player. And now an opportunity for California. Loses the puck. And that'll have time run out in the first period. So Steve, 1 0 RMU. California just looked like in that second half of that period, they started to get drained. We'll see if they're able to come back and tie this one up or Robert Murs is able to extend their lead when we come back with second period action on CU TV.
The Multimedia Access Center is an open lab where California University students can work on an assignment, attend a workshop, print a document for class, or take advantage of a variety of services such as large format printing, web development, and graphic design. Located in the renovated Natali Student Center across from the Student Bookstore, the Mac Lab is also your home for OrgSync support and services. For hours of operation or for more information, stop by the Mac Lab, visit our website, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. And welcome back. Currently, Robert Morris leads the California one men's team, one nothing here on CUTV's presentation of Vulcan Hockey. Again, I'm Zach Prosba. Joining me is Stephen Ruffing. We're back to get ready for the second period, Steve, and we'll go back and look at some of the highlights of this first period. But what were the, some, what were some of the big things that you noticed, both in a Cal standpoint and a Robert Morris standpoint, as you see the only goal scored off a turnover from California? And I think the big highlights here are Cal's offensive uh, authority right now. And even in the end, RMU had some very good offensive plays. But the physicality and even that ice, I mean, that's still a very big factor right now. And shots currently right now 12 to 10 in favor of the Colonials. We'll see if that changes going into the second period. Mortland, the goaltender for Robert Morris, he's made some fantastic stop so far tonight Steve he has to be the MVP of this game so far if we even handed out that award through one period he's the only reason this game isn't three to one in favor of California he is RMU's backbone right now they they would crumble and burn right now if it wasn't for their goaltender right now now we'll see if that play can continue on into the second period we have a fresh 20 minutes on the clock of course both teams switching ends now so it'll make it harder on the changes I think that's the thing that people underestimate when watching hockey. You look at the NHL, and even if you look here, those changes are necessary, uh, especially when you go on a defensive side. Those players have a lot more farther to travel, and do you think that could maybe be taken advantage of in this period? 100%. Anything in a game like this, any little thing could uh, be a deciding factor. So we're about to get ready to go back to play. We'll see Tonkovich take the opening face off. <clears throat> and like what you said with that switch, I mean, both teams, if you get caught in a bad in a bad line shift, I mean, you have a lot of ice to make up. California wins the opening face off of the second period. California bringing up the puck in the offensive zone. Again, it's an RMU's deep corner. California with an opportunity here. There's a man there. Now Alamo over to Mitchell. Mitchell sends it right in front. There is a man there for California who had an opportunity. That's Mike Ferringer, but he's not able to corral the puck. Puck still in California territory. That's Tonkovich with it now. So far, good passes from Cal. Very nice, crisp, clean, tape to tape passes. Now Alamo shot just above the net. Back there is Brett Young to grab it. Now Ferringer chasing after the puck again. Robert Moore is still not able to clear it out. Alamo keeps it in. And now the puck is back at center ice. It's a two on one, but easy giveaway there for Robert Morris right into the stick of Brad Mitchell. You can't give the puck away like that on a two, uh, potential two on one. That is real bad play from RMU. And we saw the, the takeaway uh, from RMU that led to their goal, the only goal of this contest right now, making it a one nothing score. As now California in the offensive zone again. We see a few changes. Looks like Young went off. Alex Smith is on. Looks like Alemo still on the ice. Looks like we'll get a few more changes, and though. we have another puck shot, not our way, but on our side. And it looks like California may have been arguing for a delay of game because it looked like Robert Morris may have flung that puck up in their own zone, and that, of course, is a penalty. Yeah, I don't think I've seen it deflect off Cal's stick or anything. So, I mean, that was a pretty bad call from the ref there. And Cal tries to keep the puck in Robert Morris' zone. Now going back to chase after it is Vasolka. Now Robert Morris controlling it. And Smith is there. He has it. Sends it over to Brady Dolan. 
And behind the net, Mortland is there to grab it. Sends it right to Dolan, though. Dolan trying to send it around the boards. And Cal U is coming out just like they came out in the first period. Very strong and just grinding that puck out in their, in their zone. Francis had a shot, but it went wide of the net. California still controlling the puck in the offensive zone. Robeson was there for California. He's not able to control it now. Looks like Alex Smith is there. Dumps it back in. Dolan controls it for the Vulcans now. Dolan running around the boards. Robeson is there now for the Vulcans. Sending around the boards. You have Francis shot, and it's blocked away by the RMU defender. Now in front of the net. Again, an opportunity for California. Nothing there. Smith with a shot. It's blocked away again. That time by Kramer, who scored the goal in this contest. Now back at center ice, California controls it. I don't know if he didn't see that stick there or not. He just skated right into that. Now RMU with a shot. It just goes wide. That was Kramer again looking for his second of the game. And and there's, that, there's players slipping and sliding everywhere early on in this second period. And maybe it has something to do with the Zamboni and getting the ice a little bit more even and wetting it down a little bit. Maybe it has something to do with that uh, because you didn't see a lot of slipping towards the end of the first period. Maybe the ice is starting to set a little bit. And then you come out here and redo it. That could be a big factor. As now a bouncing puck goes in the air, but there to grab it for the Vulcans is Jordan Lockhart. Now Hughes sends it behind the net. Vasolka sends it up. California with a takeaway here. It's a one and one. A little bit of a breakaway here. That's number nine. Tyler Gettle shot, and it's stopped by Mortland in front of the net. And Zach, this next goal is vital for Cal. Whether RMU scores or they score, the next goal is going to make or break this California team. You see this replay here, Gettle going across and shoots it. Mortland able to get, looks like his elbow, maybe his shoulder on it and knock it down in front of him. Lucky that there was no Cal player there to knock it in. And if he got a little more heat on that, maybe get him, get a bigger uh, rebound off the goalie in and you have a California player kind of more in the slot, maybe could bury that if he gets a little more heat on that. Warner wins the face off. And again, a shot from deep in the zone. Blocked away by RMU. Now RMU with some numbers. Here's a three on two. Great Hughes. back check. Hughes blocks it away. Now Warner, the captain for the Vulcans, bringing it up. He's just going to let it go. California has a man there. That's going to be number 17, Tyler Kutek. He sends it over to Lockhart. Now Warner to Tyler Gettle. Gettle. Sends it to Warner. Warner looking for a pass in front of the net, and it just goes wide. Hard to tell who it was there in front of the net. Looks like that might be number eight, Kyle Cunningham. Of course, Cunningham had that turnover that led to the RMU goal before. And that was a great opportunity he had in front of the net there. And now, the Cal California player down on the ground, and a big collision as they enter the zone. That's number 23 for the Falcons. That's Brett Young. He's slow to get up. Looked like he was trying to figure out, where am I? Yeah, luckily, the, the, the both players did get up because that was a nasty collision there. Now a shot goes above the pads of Hughes. Now a shot again here from Robert Morris. It's hit away by the stick of a Vulcan defender. Now RMU, again, that's blocked away. Looks like that's number 28, Mike Farringer. Farringer chasing after him. He lost the puck. Lockhart going in after it. We're right there for Robert Morris' Darren Broadus. And Broadus wins that fight in front of the net and sticked away by Tyler Kutek. Farringer. Cal U is very good of getting out of their uh, defensive zone right now. And that's something RMU is, very, is really struggling to do right now. Tonkovich not able to control the puck. It was two on one, the one not favoring him as now a uh, bouncing puck here goes to Hughes. He loses it. Robert Morris with an opportunity. Hughes is spinning around, and he's lucky to have that one go in front of the net right to Farringer for his team. Now passing up at center ice, and California has to go back and patrol it again. Now puck sent up the board, and this will be icing against the Vulcans with 14.28 left in the second period. Man, Steven, it seems everything was going RMU's way, but lucky breaks there for Hughes and the Vulcans trying to get away from possibly letting up a second goal. Yeah, and I couldn't tell if that was a, one of Cal's defensive players. I couldn't tell who it was to get a nice back check or if uh, if Derek Hughes uh, got a stick on that. Either way, it was great play to keep that puck out of the net on that wraparound. Now 
Now we're gonna get the face off to the left of Hughes in California's defensive zone. Lockhart, after California wins the draw. Now California trying to clear it out. It's still down on the end boards. Robert Morris with a good four check here in this period so far, about six minutes in. And now Farringer will control it for the Vulcans. He's gonna send it up, a long pass up the ice that goes into Robert Morris' zone, but it's taken away by the Colonials. Now the Colonials coming up. Two on four, four Vulcans back. Pass right in front of the net. It's sent away off the side. And coming up with it now, a nice move there by number 20, Joseph Jascott, but he's not able to take it anywhere. Now Farringer, Jascott again trying to keep it in. And it goes behind him, and the Vulcans send it down into the zone again. And with the ice like this, I see both teams are trying to do those fancy dekes, and with the ice like this, I really don't think you should try and risk a move like that with the, with the ice beam. Yeah, you don't, of course, you don't want to, you know, slip up and give it a takeaway, but you also don't want to get injured as well. That's the last thing that you want to see happen. And now there was a high stick offsides. It was a high stick or offsides. Ref waved his hand up. Really like possibly an offsides. It's waved off, though. Shot from Robert Morris. It's blocked in front. Doesn't even get the Hughes. Now it's a two-on-two. -two. Vulcan's coming. And that was number 25 for Cal U. That's Ryan Schultz. Now Robert Morris again on the other end coming on an offensive attack. Brad Mitchell is there for the Vulcans, and he gets it away. Robert Morris sends it down into the California zone around the end boards. There for it is Zach Alamo. Now to Mitchell. Mitchell, a long pass is deflected, but it goes right to Alex Warga. Warga sends it in front of the net, and that is number 25, Ryan Schultz there trying to grab it. Now Robert Morris sends it up, and Alamo's going to knock it down in the California zone near the blue line. Now sending it to center ice. That is Robeson. Robeson sends it back to Mitchell. Mitchell sends it down, and it's in the offensive zone, but it would have been offsides against California had they touched it, so California has to let it go. Now dumped again, and it goes to the end points and out of play with 12.20 left to go in the second. This Cal offense is really struggling to get a clean shot in the last, I'd say, five minutes. They haven't, they, they, they haven't really got a chance to get another shot on goal. They only have 12, and they started this period with 11. And I think, honestly, they're really struggling to even get the puck in the zone. Mm -hmm. And when they do, they lose it immediately. It's something that we saw Robert Morris doing in the first period before they were able to ramp up their play towards the end of that period. They kept losing the puck as they entered into the zone. Now California doing that. California sends it up. That's Roberson. Now Smith is there. Has to wait for Roberson to get back on sides and just dumps it into the zone. It's another opportunity wasted here by a dump in. Now Smith not able to get to that puck. Robert Morris, player trying to make off some nice moves. Now there's going to be offsides against Robert Morris, but that player smartly keeps it on sides. It's Anthony Manuel. Now Manuel is shot, and knuckles above Hughes, going around the net. Sends it back towards the blue line. And California takes it away. It's a three on one, and it's taken away by Robert Morris. That's Zorich with the stop. Now Zorich in the offensive zone. He's coming around to the front of the net. California player there to take it away. And now there's going to be a two on two. It's Smith, and it looks like Robeson. Robeson with a shot and goes above Mortland. It was actually blocked by the RMU defensive player. Couldn't, I didn't, didn't get a chance to see who that was. Now there's going to be a delayed penalty here. They will wave it off. Now a breakaway. And it's off the post. No good. That's number 16. Darren Broadus for the Colonials. Could have made it 2 nothing. California having struggles controlling the puck. And now here, an opportunity. That's Mike Warner, the captain for the Vulcans. He sends it up, and it's blocked away by Moreland. The rebound gathered by the Colonials. Yeah, and Zach, this, uh, this Cal defense is really playing very well right now, and that can maybe can motivate the offense to uh, bury one and tuck one. And you, know, you, got, you can say the same thing for Robert Morris as well. As now there's a clear breakaway here. That's number eight, Kyle Cunningham at the front of the net. Shoots, scores! And we're all tied up at one with 10.33 left in the second period. Kyle Cunningham redeems himself after the takeaway early on in the first and gets the tying goal. And RMU just got caught in a very, very bad line change. And Kyle Yu, very successful. Uh, picking that puck up and taking advantage of that. And that's something that we mentioned before this period started, those line changes. 
So that does come into play. Like you said, you thought 100% it would affect this period, and we've already seen now it did. And that good defense from California leads to that offensive play. As now we're gonna get an icing against Robert Morris. So California have an opportunity again in the Colonial Zone, under 10 and a half left here in the second period. And I was gonna say, Cal, I was gonna say that they they might have had, they're, they're looking to settle for one of those ugly goals, maybe a rebound or just maybe kind of like a fluke goal. But I mean, they proved me wrong. They buried a very pretty goal right there. Now Tonkovich on the face off, loses it. California's able to control it. Try and dump it back in, but Kramer with a big hit on Mitchell. Now California with the puck at the front of the net and it's taken away by Robert Morris. Now an opportunity here, Robert Morris. Offsides just waved off, that's number six for the Colonials, that's Anthony Hudson. Now California with it again. That is Young, Young loses it. Tonkovich there trying to clean it up. Now deep into the boards. And a scrum there in the corner. They're gonna stop play. Not exactly sure for what reason they would stop play here, unless the puck may be frozen. And you see Coach Berger there for California. He's been here quite a long time. One of a, the most successful coaches in the CHE. Of course, in California, the playoffs many a times. And we're actually gonna get a penalty here against RMU. This will put California on the power play. This penalty going against 42, Dylan Junker. Did not hear what the penalty was for, but a two minute power play here for the Vulcans try and maybe break this tie. And this is very vital right here. Oh, and you can see a scrum going on in front of the net. Now Mitchell with a shot, and it's good! Goal, California. 10 seconds into the power play, it's all tied. I was going to say it's all knotted up. Tie is broken now, two to one in favor of the Vulcans. Brad Mitchell with a wicked shot right in front of the net against Mortland. And we'll see it again here, Steve. Yeah, Brad Mitchell, right in the slot, prime shooting area. Prime shooting area and just taking advantage of that power uh, that power play and uh, bearing the biscuit on that. And then there's a possibility that puck may have been deflected by Tyler Gettle. Either way, California now has broken the tie and is up two to one with 9.45 left in the second period. No. And that was only seven seconds into that power play. Very, very impressive of this Cal U offense. Still a long way to go in this game, though. Robert Morris, we saw late in the first, their offensive ability come back into play. But California, again, for the most part, the majority of this game, they've controlled the tempo in play. As now Lockhart will send it around. RMU with an opportunity. They are going to have the puck in the, near the blue line. Send it back down to the end boards. Lockhart has it for the Vulcans. Now we're gonna see Wargo, and it's sent up into center ice. That's Jescott, and Jescott, the offside just waved off. Jescott able to send it around. Robert Morris there to collect it behind the net. And now a takeaway here. This is gonna be number 25, Ryan Schultz. Sends it back up, and the shot, there was a high stick it looked like there, no call. That shot came from Tyler Kutek for the Vulcans. And those uh, those point shots are gonna, they, they can be very, and very vital to the Vulcan offense because you get a rebound, you get a deflection, anything to throw off the uh, uh, goaltender to get uh, to get another goal. Now referee is stopping, not stopping play, but he gets in the middle of the play and actually causes Robert Morris to lose the puck on that possession. And now Mortland went behind the net, but there was a cow player right there, lucky to get away. That was Dolan. Robert Morris again controlling the puck with 8.08 .08 left in the second period. And on that last goal, they did give credit to number 18, Brad Mitchell. And here's a shot from the point again by Mitchell, who just scored that second goal for the Vulcans. Now Alamo down in front, looked like he was looking for a deflection into the net. Dolan trying to get there. Now Mitchell just going to dump it in. They're back for... Robert Morris is Eric Shearer. This Cal U offense is not giving the uh, Colonials defense a break. 
And we mentioned good defense leads to good offense. Right now, the defense from Robert Morris is kind of playing like they did in the first half of the first period. They're struggling to get the puck out of their zone. You see a little bit of a tie up here. The ref needs to call this. They need to, oh, there, there it goes. And uh, as soon as you say that, the puck comes out. Robert Morris on a three on three. Numbers behind as well. Some nifty moves here into the zone. And it's stolen away by California. Center ice now, it's a two on one, but Robert Morris is there. Now it's knocked down by Dolan. Dolan trying to go around. Alex Smith is there. He has an opportunity. He sends it in front of the net, and it's cut by Mortland in the air. And it keeps it two to one. And Cal U offense very good of keeping that pressure up on the Colonials defense. And we got 6.56 left here in the second period. And you see right here, Smith, a little bit of a wrist shot here, just trying to flick it towards the net. He did get it on goal. Right now, shots all knighted up 16 apiece for these two squads. And now we're gonna see right at the front of the net opportunity for California. But it looks like number nine, Tyler Gettle was locked up with the defender, so he's not able to play the puck. California setting it out again. And now we got Cunningham, who scored the first goal for the Vulcans. And now Warner with a shot, and it's blocked away by an RMU defender. And that RMU defender lost his stick as well, right at the front of the net, Warner. And oh, the puck that's... skips past the California defenseman. That's Vasolka right at the top of the point. Now Vasolka going down, loses the puck, and RMU sends it back down. Warner, the captain, has it, and he sends it into the RMU zone. Now a nice play here, and Gettle's not able to do anything with it as Moreland's just going to stop the play. And there's that Cal U offense again, keeping that pressure on the defense because they are just letting up the puck left and right. And right now we're going to have a little bit of a clock malfunction as Time did not stop on the clock. Right now the clock reads 5.55. Should read 6.05 about, I believe, as they never stopped the clock after Mortland froze the puck. And, they're, and they reset it to six minutes even. So they'll start play there. Now at the top of the point, there's a man open as Lockhart as Moreland just grabs the shot out of the air. Looks like that was Tonkovich on that opportunity. 5.50 to go now in the second period. This Cal U offense still looking very effective. They want another insurance goal here. Yeah, you never have too much insurance. I mean, right now we're, of course, following Mets Cubs in game four of the NLCS. Mets are up 6-0, but I'm sure they want more runs as Hughes to flex away a long shot, looked like it was trying to bounce in. Just looks like there's nothing stopping this Cal U Vulcans team right now. And this is your first time seeing them, so what are your early impressions right now about a period and a half in? Well, in the first period, they're, they were a bit inconsistent, but very strong still, and they're coming in this second period full guns a-blazing, and they're just on fire right now, and I'm very impressed with this Cal U hockey team. The only, only thing I can say is you don't want all the energy played in the second period to only go up one into the third and then all of a sudden lose your energy and Robert Morris come back and either tie it or then tie it and take the lead. So California definitely looking for that insurance goal like we mentioned as RMU will send it back down into the zone under five minutes to go now in the period. And as a uh, Pittsburgh Penguins fan, having a lead going into the third period is always scary because the I Penguins... Mean, we even saw that last time against the Panthers. They were up 2-0. They had to go to overtime to win it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, hopefully this Cal U team isn't like that. But just me being used to that, uh, I'm still scared going into the third period with a lead like this. Now shot goes wide of the net. It'll stop on the back of the net. Looks like Lockhart is there to play it off. California is able to try and clear it out of the zone. Alex Smith is waiting near center ice. Looks like that's going to be Young who comes up with it. Smith. Was looking for the puck, it's behind him. He doesn't know where the puck is. He had an open opportunity. Now Mitchell with a slap shot at the point is blocked away from the pad of Mortland. Now Mortland with another shot. Looks like he just put his body right against the pole and tried to see if he could stop it. Now another puck bouncing in the air. This one clears out though. Smith is able to go get it. Now at the top of the point, Mitchell again. Mitchell sends the slopper. Ooh. Oh, it's off the post. And, and you could see 
Early on in that play, as that play was developing, you, had, you see number 33, Alex Smith, in front of the net. He is a big boy, and that is a very big screen for the, uh, for Cal U. Kind of looking like Zidane Chara wearing that 33 out there, <laughs> and the big size. Now shot Smith oh. at the front of the net. It's tipped away by the RMU defender. Maybe should have been a penalty as the California player was tripped up. That was Young, no call. Young tried to send it to the front of the net, and Vinny Macaron not able to get it. Oh, that now, was very close deflection on that one. Macaron, or excuse me, looks like that was just got there, and oh. goal! Macaron, after it hits the post, it goes in. Looks Zach, like he might is, have had an opportunity again at it. This is turning into a cafe disco. You have goals left and right with these disco balls up on the ceiling. It's a party in here. And we'll look at this replay again. And I'm interested to see if it went in just off its own deflection. You see Mac around there. And it went off Portland. So that's kind of an own goal, I guess you could say. As it's now 3-1 Vulcans with 3.07 left in the second period. So tonight the goal scores Cunningham, Mitchell, and Macaron for the Vulcans, Kramer for the Colonials, as the Vulcans have come out and scored three goals here in the second period. Now Macaron trying to fight for the puck some more. Almost taken away again by the Vulcans. Looks like that was Masolka with it. And with a 3-1 lead like this, does Cal you play go play more deep more defensively are they going to play defensively or are they going to try to uh, bury more goals well in the few times i've been able to watch this team i can tell you one thing they never stop trying to score uh so i'm definitely going to assume that they're going to try and maybe put up five to ten goals and especially against a team you don't really like i'm sure you want to put up as many points and kind of stick it to them in a game of bragging rights tonight now, under two and a half minutes left, RMU in the offensive zone. This is the first time RMU has been in their offensive zone in quite a while, actually. Yeah, it's kind of like looking back at our Cal IEP football game where right now we're going to get a penalty. It looks like, I'm not sure if this is going to Cal or RMU, but California started in IEP territory with the football almost the entire second half, whereas now California's been in our new territory almost the entire second period. As we're looking there, I actually don't think there's going to be a penalty here, just a stoppage of play. Maybe the puck went over the boards or something. With two minutes to go now in the period. RME trying to get the puck out of their zone. And there to try and keep it in was Kutek. He's not able to. It's a little bit of a breakaway. Shot is deflected by Kutek. He's able to get back. And he hits the player against the boards as well. No penalty call coming. And Kutek did a very good job of back checking on that after losing the puck, getting back and making sure that the RMU player didn't have a chance to score. And that was Brad Hudson who was looking for that opportunity. Now Cunningham, he scored the first Vulcans goal tonight. He's coming up. He has a man with him. That's uh, Gillick. Now a deflection seeking shot goes wide. And now just sent out by RMU. That is number seven, Matt Prostensky. Cunningham sends it down, but it's hit on an RMU player. And the yeah. RMU player yeah, that, that just came in for a change is, oh, he's hit hard and he's down. Looks like he's gonna have to go off the ice. Actually, he stays on, that is Zach Schindler. One minute to go in the period. And I thought RMU was actually gonna get a too many men on the ice on that. That was close there. And now an opportunity here. Well, no icing. No icing. RMU had an opportunity there. I don't know if the RMU player realized that there wasn't going to be an icing there. And he got to the puck first, but I think he expected a little bit more pressure off the California defense from that. And there was nothing there. There's no uh, Cal player goes down. Now a scrum in the boards. You got about 30 seconds left in the period now. And if you take a look at their shots, Cal U is up 22 and 17 on, on shots. That is a very big difference coming in with, what was that, 11 shots that we had coming into the second period? I'm pretty sure it was like 11 to 10, 11 to 12 in favor of RMU. It's now a shot again here, hits the high boards above Mortland. Look like he even tried to duck away out of the way of that shot. It was a hard slapper. Now again above, and time will run out in the second period. Steven, what do you think of that period? 
Great period. Cow, Cow really came out and proved themselves, proved themselves on that one. They came out guns a-blazing. They were on fire. And we'll have to see if they're able to hold on. They're up 3-1 right now with Robert Morris. Colonial's going to have to stage a big comeback when we come back for third period action here on CUTV. Take preset one for Cal U's best music. More music in the car. More music in the door. More music everywhere. This is, this is 91.9 WCAL Power 92. The home of the Vulcan Nation. Playing Cal U's best music. 91.9 WCAL. WCAL Power 92. And welcome back to the Ice Garden, where it is 3-1 in favor of the Vulcans. We're about 20 seconds away from the start of the third and final period here at the Ice Garden in the Homecoming Hockey Series Game 2. And, Steven, in that second period, California's offense came out and put on a show. Yeah, hopefully they can keep that up in the third period and uh, come out at just as strong as they left the second period. And their defense started doing pretty well as uh, to go along with that because RMU was basically never in the offensive zone at all in that second period. Uh, unlike the end of the first period, we thought maybe they'd come out and continue that style of play, but California's defense buckled down again and kept them out. Yeah, personally, I think Cal U played outstanding defense. Every time it was in, in uh, Cal U's zone, it was in there five seconds tops and Cal U gets it out right there. So we're going to see... For the final 20 minutes, California with a two-goal lead. They have a little bit of insurance just in case Robert Morris is able to put one on the board again. But, you know, we were talking. We're both Penguins fans. We've seen comebacks against, you know, when you're down two, three, sometimes even four goals. If you're Robert Morris, Stephen, what do you do to come back? I think first and foremost has to start on the offensive side. Yeah, you need to keep that, you need to keep that puck in, in your offensive zone, and you need... Just like I said what Cal U might have had it done, our Robert Morris, has they have to settle for the ugly goals. Maybe a rebound, uh, deflection, something like that. They are not looking for pretty goals this late, this, this late in the game, down 3-1. to one. And, of course, teams switch sides again. So Robert Morris going from right to left, left to right are the Vulcans. And this makes the changes easier, which we saw definitely impacted that second period. Maybe that gets RMU back into a, a point where they're able to take advantage of having their bench so close to them now. Yeah, and that uh, that faulty line change that RMU had to cause Cal U's first goal really changed the game significantly. Cal U is now up 3-1 because of that goal, I think. And California loses it at center ice. RMU trying to bring it up. And across into the offensive zone, it's kept there by Warner. Now RMU brings it in the offensive zone still. It's blocked away to California. A shot blocked away again. It looks like that was Warner for the Vulcans who blocked it out. Nice. Now a Lamo there sends it behind the net. That was great defense from Cal blocking two shots there, I believe. And now they're on a rush here. California with the puck, and now it's going to be cleared out. RMU trying to come on an attack. It's along the side boards, and no icing. As Vasoka looked back, trying to probably figure out, you know, why was there no icing there? Robert Morris keeps the puck in the offensive zone. They send it up, and Hughes is going to catch it and come down with it and stop play. 18.08 left. This RMU team is really trying to find find a way to get that puck on net and get a shot and possibly a goal. Shots right now in favor of the Vulcans, 23 to 18. The California wins the draw. California will bring it up along the boards. Smith now with it. He's gonna try and outrun everybody, but a great speed rush there from Anthony Hudson for the Colonials. 
Now California loses possession of the puck. RMU coming up with it. And California's going to take it away yet again. And now bringing it up is number 10 for Cal U. That's Dolan. And Dolan going behind the net. He got 17.38 left in the third period. Now California loses the puck again. RMU's just going to dump it down after crossing center line. California will go back to control it. Nice little move right there. That was kind of like a little juke move. And now a, a little bit of a rush up the side. Bohr is not able to control this. Basolka, RMU has the pass go through the legs of Darren Broadus. And now RMU just troubles tonight controlling the puck. That's their biggest issue so far. And again, it's coming up here. Yeah, if they could just control that puck a little better, make a little more clean passes, they might have a chance to bury one or two here in this uh, third period. We're gonna get a stoppage here. May be a penalty coming against Cal U. We'll see. As it looks like, indeed, there will be. Tonkovic is gonna go to the sin bin for a couple minutes. 16.55 left in the third, and RMU is on their first power play of the contest. Yeah, we'll see how this uh, RMU power play does. This is the first time seeing them tonight. This might be, might be a very good chance to get a goal here and maybe tuck another one. Uh. And frankly, Steve, they need a goal here. This is their best offensive opportunity of their night so far at the top of the point. And here's an opportunity. Shot is blocked away by Hughes. And it's sent out by the Vulcan defender. Robert Morris, an odd pass. Doesn't go to any Colonial. California's able to field it. And it stays in the zone, though. RMU looking for their passing lanes in a five-on-four situation. About a minute 18 left in the power play. And now at the top of the point. Shot coming, and it's redirected by a block from Cal U player. That's number 20, that's Jeff Scott with that block. And this RMU power play is really coming out strong. They know what they know what they need to do. And now here's a shot that goes wide of the net. And there was an opportunity there for uh, Joe Doro of the Colonials. He had an open net, just misses it. Looks like he wasn't able to handle the puck. So again, the puck handling issues come to the forefront for the Colonials. Now behind the net, Robert Morris player. Sends it around, that's number 21. And it's a goal, Robert Morris. There was a screen right in front. I was watching them the entire way right in front of us. On that goal was number 21, Ryan Dixon. And just like that, it's three to two. 36 seconds, we're still left on the power play. 15, 31 left in the third period. And that is exactly what RMU needed here. And you see that screen right in front. Hughes can't even see that puck. He has three guys right in front of him that just slides in. And it looked like it actually hit Number 17, Tyler, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. I can't Q -Tech. read that. Q-Tech. It actually looked like it deflected off him and went in the net. So California really at the own mercy of two goals tonight for Robert Morris. Robert Morris attacking again, trying to knock this one up. They have an opportunity here at the front of the net. It's deflected and it goes into the California possession. California looking. Now they need some more insurance. He's got 15 minutes about left in this period. Now coming up with Warner on the slap shot, he whiffed. Now trying to send it back around, he's got Cunningham there. Not able to feed the puck right in front and it's blocked away. Puck is in the air, it bounces and it's knocked down by Mitchell who's already scored tonight. Cunningham brings it back into the center ice. Cunningham sends it down on a dump and Robert Morris is there to collect it. And it's taken away by Mitchell in center ice, nice move there. Going around, slap shot and it goes by the back of the net off wide. That was a real nice nifty move from number 18, Brad Mitchell there to get a nice shot on net. Now Warner, he will control it, send it around the boards in front. Smith was there, but it's taken away by the Colonials. And Fasolka going back after it. Robert Morris coming with a little speed behind him. Warner has it now and sends it back on in a dump into the Colonial zone. Moreland will send it around. Smith is there for the Falcons, and now with it is Robeson. And Robeson trying to collect the puck. Robert Morris player trips. Now it's going to be a three on two. Robert Morris coming. That's Schindler. Now to Hudson. Oh, number, 
number 12, Zach Schindler, just took a very big spill. He was actually just by himself and just kind of fell right in front of the Cal U net. And it looks like so far in this period, we're seeing Robert Morris is settling for those dirty goals, like he said, the not so pretty ones, trying to get those rebounds and opportunities in front of the net. That screen one, that wasn't exactly pretty, but Hughes was not able to see that play. That's really factoring into the game plan so far. It's like, maybe you were coaching him up uh, before this period started. <laughs> Yeah, you got RMU right now. They have to do what they can to get a goal. They really have to fight hard for it. And uh, RMU player, that's uh, Schindler, takes a stick with him as he goes down, splings it around. Looks like that was Ferringer's stick. He has it back now. RMU is not able to control the puck again. They had an opportunity there. Now almost loses the puck. Ferringer is coming from behind. And Zach, like you said, this RMU team is really struggling to control that puck right now. Shots 24-22 in favor of the Vulcans. So far, two shots against five for RMU right now in this period. RMU coming again on offense, sends it back, a nice pass here, shot, it's no good, and it bounces out. RMU had an opportunity there, not able to corral it. This RMU offense was really keeping Cal U on their toes right now. Now, Army's defense also not letting a good forecheck from the Vulcans come around. Moreland with a deflection. In front of the net, opportunity there, open net, and a score! Tonkovich with the 4-2 goal with 12-24 left. And that play, and you could sense that goal coming from a mile away. What great passing that was from Cal U offense. And you see there, open opportunity net. Tonkovich won't miss that one with a wide open hole. Uh, looks like that might have been uh, Ferringer on the assist. 12-24 left, and you know, Mortland, he's had a very good game tonight. He put his head down like, man, we were this close to coming back, and it was just taken away from us. And on that play, you really can't blame Mortland 100%. That RMU defense really just crashed, and Cal U uh, countered on that, and they got a goal from it. And as I was just saying, right before that play happened, I was saying Robert Morris wasn't letting a good forecheck for the Vulcans. But right there, their defense, it worked against them as they sent it back up the middle of California's right there to corral that pass. Now Mitchell controls it for the Vulcans, sends it up. Now Tonkovich sends it out, excuse me, now it's Jascott. Now going after was number 25, Schultz. Opportunity in front of the net. Now another shot here, slap shot, no good. And there goes RMU again. They almost turned the they've turned the puck over, almost almost letting in another goal. And Cal U whiffed on a pass. That's a Lamo. Now California controls it coming in. Was number seven Wargo. Puck down in the corner. Hard pass goes in front of the net. Opportunity there, and it's a and goal. Chescott runs into the net, but he got it in before it came off his bearings. 5-2 Vulcans, 11.33 left. Kudos to Cal U for, for really jumping on that puck. That was really good by number by number 20, Joe Gerard. And that, again, Moreland, he was just pulled out of his positioning. It looked like by his own teammate even. Uh, and <laughs> like I said, the puck got in before the net came off. So it definitely counts. 5-2 Vulcans, and the Vulcans have scored two goals here in this period. I said they would need some more insurance, and after giving up that second goal to make it a 3-2, two straight. And it looks like Robert Morris has called a timeout, so we're gonna look at the replays so far in this third period. And here we, here we have RMU, and I wanna see does, yeah, it did deflect off number 17, Tyler Kutek. And, and here we have number 26, Anthony Tonkovich's goal. And open and uh, open net right there just takes full advantage of that. And Tonkovich, you know, he's had 10 points this year at an 11. Uh, he's that first line center for the Vulcans. Uh, but the captain, Mike Warner, he's done a good job tonight, too. You really have to give credit to the wingers for California getting a really good forecheck tonight. I think that's what's been key to their offensive rise in the second and third period. 
Yeah, I think that's Cal U's strong point right now is their four check, 100%. And now puck sent in towards the end boards. And RMU has a chance to corral it. California still with an opportunity, but now RMU is going to dump it into center ice. And Zach, we have t-shirts flying all over the place right now. The Cal U dance team, or I'm sorry, the Cal U cheerleaders tossing out shirts to the fans right now. And there's going to be a stoppage of play. The net came loose with exactly 11 minutes to go. So, after it seems like the second and first period, we barely had any stops. We had quite a few in those last few minutes. Uh, Robert Morris, you need three goals to even tie it. Do you think it's out of the realm of possibility that they can do that, or is there a slight bit of hope? I honestly don't think there's there's much hope for RMU right now, because you saw RMU's, R, RMU finally buried one, and Cal U answered within minutes, and then got another goal to top that one. So, if RMU does score, I could see Cal U coming right back and um, burying another one themselves. Yeah, it's kind of like Cal is kind of like baiting them in. It's like, okay, come on, we'll let you score, and then we'll pounce again and attack and go up even further. As we're going to have an RMU player be escorted off because he is injured. Looks like that is Zach Schindler, number 12. It's unfortunate to see there. He's very slow getting off. Looks like it might be upper, lower body. You never know with hockey injuries. All they say is upper body or lower body. Right. It's not like. <laughs> and now pass goes from Alamo to Mitchell. Mitchell at the top of the point. Fakes a shot in front of the net. Moreland able to go over and get the save. And now a turnover. And at the front of the net again. Mitchell was there but not able to put it in. California still coming this attack. Like I said, Steve, I would not be surprised if California tried to put up 10 goals, and it looks like they are. Yeah, and this RMU team is really getting haunted by their tur turnovers right now because I because they're just giving Cal U their chances right now, and I could really see Cal U bearing another couple goals. Now Cal U loses possession of the puck. RMU has an opportunity here. This will be Dixon, sent back up, but Smith has it. Now sends it to Robeson. Robeson a little bit quicker than most of the Vulcans players. Now to Smith. Smith with an opportunity has it deflected away. Smith will be knocked down, no call. It looks like Dixon's hurt for Robert Morris. He's very slow to get up, and the refs are going to stop play here. That is two injured players now for Robert Morris in what seems to be successive plays. Schindler and Dixon, 12 and 21. Dixon is very slow getting up right now. He actually collided with, yeah, you could see he collided with Alex Smith, number 33. It looks like maybe a knee injury somewhere at the leg. Maybe it might have been like a knee-on-knee -knee collision, and of course those are going to hurt. Yeah, Dr. Zach here would say either upper or lower body injury, so. Well, definitely lower body by the looks <laughs> of that replay on that one. He's going to stay in, it looks like. But he's definitely hobbled. He didn't even walk into the, into the bench. He hopped up there. So, wonder if we'll see Dixon again with 10-19 left. Now a shot here goes wide of the net. That was Francic on that attempt. Now Francic tries to go for the puck. California's going to have it. Vasolka back with the Vulcans defense. Now Moreland controls it and sends it around the boards. Under 10 minutes to go in the third period. Now Robeson sends it into the RMU zone. Now Robeson again sends it in the RMU zone, and now at this point California can kind of sit back and say, okay, we'll just keep dumping the puck, keep play keep away a little bit. Yeah, and if they keep dumping that puck, if RMU gets it, they are just continuously giving the puck up in their own zone. And uh, you played soccer uh, and it's kind of like when you go up by a big margin, you kind of just basically play keep away, don't you? Right, yeah, you just keep dumping it. It's, ju it's honestly just like hockey. You just keep kicking it or dumping it in their own end and let them, and let them play, play their game while you're just sitting back and playing defensively. And that's what Cal U should be doing right here. Now Army misses an opportunity for the puck. Now Army going to bring it in. That's Hudson. And it's... 
taken away by the California defense. Again, puck control, not very good for RMU tonight. Yeah, these RMU Colonials, they really look just defeated right now. A lot of them are just hanging their heads and not playing not playing up to their standards right now. They're playing really sloppy, and we've actually seen that all game, them playing sloppy. Yeah, and you know, you don't want to bash into it too much, but you, you would think that that would get corrected. You know, as a player, I'm sure you want to go make adjustments throughout the game, but they haven't been, and I think that's been their big issue. They're not adjusting to the kind of play that California's bringing, and that's why they're down 5-2 and looks seemingly out of it with 8.40 left. Now a three on two, it's gonna be dumped in by RMU. Uh, RMU is the first to get there. And here's an opportunity from the top near the corner of the blue line. And it's kept in by RMU now, but California's defense is right there. Good four check though by the Colonials here on this possession. And RMU keeps it in, but again, puck control. Players should really just have complete control that when it bounces up and it keeps hitting the stick and it just pulls it forward. Yeah, they're lacking control right now with that puck and it goes for all night too. They, they've really struggled keeping that puck on their sticks. Now California bringing in the center ice. RMU is there. Trying to send it to the front of the net. Hughes going to block it away. California going to send it up. And Robert Morris is able to corral just past their own blue line. Now Warner went back on a defensive play and hits the end boards. No icing here for Solka gets it for Cal U. 7.30 left in the third period. Yeah, RMU really can't even connect a pass right now. Very sloppy play. They they all just look defeated right now. And and it's it's sad because they did for a while there put up a fight, tucking away two goals, but Cal U really just just pounced right back on them and uh, added another two goals to their lead. And I'll be honest, I really thought RMU was gonna tie this game up when it was 3-2. Uh, but since then, California has come back out on the offensive side and you know, done a very good job. Uh, and their defense, again, just playing that keep away, like we said, uh, just dumping chase for the other team. So RMU had their chances, they just didn't capitalize when they needed to. Now Moreland comes out of net to try and play it. It goes all the way around him though in a very fast puck around the boards. Now RMU coming up again and again the wingers doing a very good job of playing the boards and keeping the pucks away from the middle of the ice for the Colonials to do anything. Now sent up and that looks like it is Gettle. Gettle sends it down, Moreland gets it behind his own net under seven minutes to go. Gettle is there for the Vulcans and now a long pass sent up and it's taken away by Francis. Francis sends it to Fasolka. Now Cunningham was going after the puck. He's gonna tail off and go in for a change. Now Robert Morris controls it. And it's sent up and it's hit. No icing. Under six and a half left. And shots right now, 32-23 in favor of the Vulcans. Not very often you can see a, a collegiate hockey game go 32 shots or more. Vulcan's offense just, they're working with the dirty shots, the dirty stuff. They're not sitting and waiting for the pretty slap shot. They're getting in front of the net and they're trying their best like you mentioned before RMU needed to do and they did. Oh, and RMU just tucked one home. And RMU gets one in and I wasn't even looking so good call there uh, by you partner or 6.02 left, RMU makes it 5-3. Uh, so maybe a little bit of hope as we'll look at this goal again as I didn't even see it so let's see who was able to put this one in? That's number two. That's Zorich just coming around the end of the net. Looks like Hughes didn't even Yeah, Hughes him. wasn't even paying attention. He was still looking behind the net. But we'll see how Cal reacts to this. It'll be very interesting to see how they play here. Every time RME has scored, Cal has gone on to score two goals after that or more. So we'll see if they're able to do that again under six minutes left. Now RME sends it in the Cal zone. Pass up, that's Ferringer who's gonna get whacked on the sideboards near the RME bench. And I don't know if you noticed this either, but these refs have been really lenient on these these late hits and the, the, these almost kind of, they could be roughing penalties. These refs have really let a lot slide here. Yeah, I, I think honestly with five and a half minutes left, I, I think, you know, 
I think they're trying not to call anything, trying to get this one over with, honestly, just because, you know, these teams, they are so aggressive and they are rivals, and I'm sure that they were, you know, understanding of that before they were getting this game underway, so they probably were letting some things go uh, just because of the way that these two teams play each other. And now California going to send it down into the offensive zone again. RMU has it. A little bit of a kick pass there. Now sent up the side. That's number five for RMU. That's Josh Merriman. Now down at the near side. That's Zurich, who just scored the third goal for RMU. RMU really lacking possession right here. Now Army tried to send it in, and now they lose the puck at center ice. Going after it was number 25, Schultz, for the Vulcans. Now RMU coming again. They're, they're lacking numbers up the ice. I think that's another problem. They're not sending everybody forward. They have a lot of people back, and that's a problem. When they send people forward, they're all on one side, too. And they're, you got to spread people out. Right, in a game like this, this close, 5-3, four minutes to play, you really need to send as many troops as you can up to to bury to bury a goal to score in this little this little amount of time in the game. And you know another thought, Stephen is pulling the goalie. A lot of teams went down by two uh, in the NHL. They pulled the goalie if they're down by two, like four minutes left. And of course, we just passed that threshold now, so. You know, maybe like two and a half minutes, I think, maybe? Yeah, I'd say two and a half, two minutes. It's getting down to crunch time. They have to do it soon if they have any chance of scoring a goal. Here's the problem, though. We, we've been saying they're lacking possession. They can't get the puck down the ice to be able to take their goalie out. And that that is that is true. And also, once they do have the puck, they just give it right back to Cal, just like that, yeah, just like we saw right there. That play right there is a prime example of that. Army have possession, send it right to California. And I believe Mortland has actually been looking over at the bench and you know, kind of like, okay, am I going to come off? But every time he looks over there, he has to look back down because the puck's right in front of him. Right. And I really think this RMU defense and RMU team as a whole really let goaltender Nate Mortland down this game. Yeah, this Mortland played a, a pretty good game. Those five goals, really only maybe two are on him. The other three are definitely on this RMU team and defenders in front of him. You know, we're Penguins fans. It's kind of like when the defense lets Mark andre Fleury down, when the team should have won a game big, but Fleury still gives up three goals and they still win. It's kind of like a stinging win because you know, Fleury should have got a shutout, but the defense let him down. It's sort of similar today. Right, I actually say that all the time, whether it's Fleury or even Zadkoff. A lot of people, when Zadkoff first started, they gave him a lot of, they gave him a lot of stick because they did not like how he played, but I always said it was the defense. It was not Zadkoff. It was strictly the defense letting those goals in. And I, for one, am very happy that Zadkoff is back. I did not like Tomas Grice last year because he's an Islander now, and uh, he's even come out and said, you know what, I love it here in New York. I hated it in Pittsburgh. So, and, of course, with 2.20 left, RMU controls it in the offensive zone now. And here comes the goalie, but they're going to call... Moreland went off as Cal U was bringing the puck up. That could have gone all sorts of wrong in one instance, but back to my point, 2.14 left. We're talking about the Penguins. Of course, I'm a Penguin fan. I'm from Atlanta, though. So, Steven, welcome to the third annual edition of the <laughs> Gary Bettman Darn You for Taking Hockey Away from Atlanta rant, brought to you in part on CUTV. And, again, Gary Bettman, all I want is hockey in Atlanta. I don't care if the team's not that good. I don't care if you take them away in 10 years again. Just want cheap tickets so I can go <laughs> see the Penguins for 20 bucks in the nosebleeds. Not that bad. And really, Please bring it back. Why Atlanta? They had a a pretty good team. Like they they yeah, had well, good. They, they made playoffs once. Well, look at why not take Florida take away Florida? Why Atlanta? Yeah, it, it's. And it's not just one team, it's two teams. That's that's the big issue. Bettman took two teams from Atlanta, but and that's of course two is the differential here tonight right now. 5-3. RMU is on a power play for about the next minute and 20 seconds with 134 left. So maybe if they get a power play goal here, you didn't have to do it quick though. Then you can pull your goalie and maybe try and knock this up. 
So it looks see, like all hope is not lost. Well, yeah, see now, I mean, I know they're, yeah, why aren't they, why isn't RMU pulling their goalie right now? I mean, they have to. I'm yeah. guessing when the face, uh, when they drop the puck here, uh, Moreland will go to the bench. No, he's no, he doesn't. I, and for good reason, he had to play the puck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this RMU team just cannot possess the puck right now in order for Moreland to go, go to the bench. And a good penalty kill right here from the Vulcans. And that's Warner with it. The captain for the Vulcans. Not on the stat sheet tonight, but had a very good game. 1-10 left in the third period. Now we're going to get a stoppage here. Looks like there may be a penalty on RMU, but we'll see in just a second. Yeah, there is. Yeah, so penalty on RMU is going to make it a four on four for about 53 seconds, and then California can just really run out the clock. This game's pretty much over with 107 left. That's really disappointing. I thought RMU was going to bring a lot more to the table than what they did. Yeah, and RMU, uh, again, the Vulcans are now going to be 28-4-0-2 against Robert Morris in this all-time series. And, you know, Robert Morris, I thought we'd honestly see a little bit better of a game out of them than we did tonight, but... Of course, this is not the Robert Morris Division One team that made the Frozen Four a few years ago. This has the club team, so you have to, you know, maybe take expectations down a little bit. And maybe they weren't very impressive on the uh, score sheet, but it was a physical game. There was a lot of big hits, and that's and you always like to see that in a good game of hockey. Now, Gettle will control for the Vulcans. 30 seconds left, about 14 seconds left on the four on four. RMU controls it, sends it back in the offensive zone. That's Kramer there with it. And now California will control about 15 seconds left. They're going to bring it back to center ice. Bouncing puck, controlled by Mortland. He just dumps it out. 10 seconds now. And California on the power play now on a five on four. They're just going to send it back up the ice. Three seconds, two, one. And the California Vulcans have defeated the RMU Colonials tonight by a score of five to three. Steve, your first impressions and your first Cal U hockey game. Very impressed. The first period was a little shaky, but they really formed to a nice structure and they got the win. I was very impressed with them. And so that will likely do it for our presentation of hockey this year on CU TV. Our next broadcast will be Avella at Carmichael's High School Football this coming Friday. Um, and then, of course, we have the Vulcan game against Clarion, which is also homecoming. Make sure to do the rest of the homecoming activities this week. For everyone on crew, Stephen Ruffin debuting tonight. I'm Zach Prosma. Thanks for watching Vulcan Hockey as part of the homecoming hockey series on CUTV.